take that, that he knows Goose is in a higher, better place. So it's a type of prayer saying, Goose, yeah. talk to me, help me. Welcome back, everybody, to the Movies Are Spiritual podcast. I'm here with Doug and Drew, and today Doug is sharing his top six favorite movies of all time. We're going to talk about why each of these movies is great, and Doug will tell us what spiritual theme he saw in each of these movies, and then we will grill him on it, because Drew and I may or may not agree. So, Doug, go ahead and tell us, what is your sixth favorite movie of all time? Number six. And I do want to preface all of these with, realize these are my favorite movies. I'm not saying these are the best movies of all time. Some of them you may watch and wonder why and i'll explain through this podcast but just to let you know these are my favorite not saying they are the greatest but they are number six just squeezing by number seven which i'll give a shout out to hoosiers love you but i think when it comes to what we're talking about here in this podcast number six spot and that is top gun starring tom cruise and val kilmer other people (laughs) that movie has everything it is pretty close to a perfect music video because it is pretty much half music video half drama half action half comedy the movie starts off where they're flying over and they get into an altercation with some mix coming from russia in the 80s that was a bad thing bad thing now if that would happen not to give too much up but One of the pilots starts to freak out because he's scared. Tom Cruise, Maverick, he kind of gets off on that danger and to the point where he starts joking about it. And they're joking, playing around with the MiGs, knowing that the MiGs aren't going to fire. They're not going to fire on them. But the way he approaches seriousness, it kind of shows his immaturity. And that's one thing that I kind of like about the movie is Maverick starts off immature and you see how he grows even you know he's a uh, probably in his mid-20s at this point he's an adult but he's still very green very immature and throughout the movie you see him grow into this somewhat more mature pilot which is uh, kind of an opening theme i do like what do you guys think oh, have yeah. you seen the movie um oh, i know <laughs> drew has i didn't see it until i was a freshman in college and my roommate, George, he was in the Air Force and he was trying to be an Air Force pilot. Oh, right on. He was like, dude, you haven't seen this movie. You got to see this movie. So we watched it. And yeah, I hadn't had any interest in that film before at that point in my life. Mm-hmm. But it was a good movie. I mean, it had romance in it. It had thrill-seeking and action. But I like what you said about seeing this character mature. Because I've noticed that there were characters when I was young I watched them and I was like, they're so awesome. I want to be like them. And then I watched them when I'm older and I'm like, wait, that guy's making terrible decisions. And when you're young, you don't realize those characters are not mature. But when you're older, you start to see those things and watching them grow up throughout a movie. I think that's kind of cool. Oh, yeah. Because we go through that. I saw that movie in the theaters in 86. Remember, my mom and I went and watched it. And I think... Two days later, we went back and watched it again. And of course, I had the soundtrack because the soundtrack was actually, I still have oh, yeah. the soundtrack on vinyl uh, in the other room. So I'll pop that out every so often. But yeah, it, does, it makes a really good point about how the immaturity of Maverick is in this movie. You know, he takes no responsibility for anything. He's buzzing the tower. He knows he's not supposed to do that. He gets in trouble for having a fling with the Admiral's daughter. You know, things that he knows he's not supposed to be doing, and he does it. And the whole time, uh, Val Kilmer's character, Iceman, if there's supposed to be like a villain in the movie, it's kind of Iceman. He's the rival of Maverick. But you're right. Watching it, you're like, man, Iceman's got his stuff together. Like, he's kind of arrogant and cocky, but he's taking responsibility. And he knows that what Maverick is doing is reckless. And he tries to tell him that constantly. So, yeah, it is kind of a weird shift on that. But by the end of the movie, Maverick is pretty much got it together at that point. But yeah, it's just, it's a lot of fun. That movie is so much fun to watch. But yeah, moving on through the movie. So you got a coming to age type movie for mid 20 somethings. But two, you know, there's a lot of different themes you can look at. Uh, The theme of family, 
Maverick doesn't have any blood left. His parents are dead. He didn't have any brothers or sisters that we know of. All he has is his best friend, Goose, uh, played by Anthony Edwards. Even though Anthony Edwards is married and has a kid, you see that Maverick is very much part of that family. Spoilers. If you haven't seen this, I do apologize, but you might want to skip past it. Of course, uh, most of us know Goose ends up dying. To see that loss and how he takes it shows how much he loved his brother. And, you know, it was more than a friendship. It was more than a partnership. It was more than co-pilot pilot. They were brothers to see, even when he would screw up, how he knew he was letting Goose down in situations. You know, you can see how much Maverick loved him and how much it hurt when he lost him. So that was another theme I really liked. And the fact that, you know, at the end, he Top Gun being a competition a school, a competition, they all come together at the end and they become a family. So to see him lose part of a family, but gain another family at the end, I think that was kind of cool too. There's the spiritual theme of family and basically bringing a family back together then, right? Sort of brotherly love and camaraderie. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. 100%. Forged through danger, I guess. I mean, that's a pretty dangerous job. Yeah, I mean, uh, my brother spent a year in Iraq. When he got married, Three of the groomsmen were people he went overseas with, and he still every year this his whole group gets together. And you know, some people might miss, and they don't see other people for five years. But you know, as soon as they see each other, it's just like the three of us talking. It's great to see them; they're still family. They they form a bond and something like that. So they showed that in the movie, and it worked out pretty well. Plus, you throw some awesome music behind it. It's always fun. very awesome music. So I could see maybe the spiritual theme, the the subconscious statement of the movie to be like, we need each other to get through these kinds of difficult situations and loss and danger and mm-hmm. things like that. W- would you say that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You probably know that movie better than I do. So <laughs> uh, there was a there was a point in time where I could probably quote you the whole movie. But yeah, those were probably the two main things I saw spiritually in that at the end, he's reaching out spiritually to Goose. So at the end, they're fighting the MiGs again, and it's just Iceman up there with Slider, and then Maverick has has to come out, and he ends up breaking off, and he's freezing up, basically. And towards the end, that's where he says the uh, first time he said it without Goose being his co-pilot, he's like, talk to me, Goose. You know, you can Take that, that he knows Goose is in a higher, better place. So, you know, he's praying. It's a type of prayer saying, Goose, yeah. talk to me, help me. So that's another, uh, something a little maybe more subconscious, but not huge. Like but almost still. a longing to still be connected, right. even though you're not physically together. Mm-hmm. That's very cool. And it was great when they uh, put that in the sequel as well, which amazing movie. Best movie of the year, 2022, easily. But yeah, anything else you guys think of uh, when you think of the movie? I mean, obviously we didn't break down every single scene. You know, there was nothing spiritual about playing with the boys. <laughs> That's the volleyball scene. Well, what does the film have to say about romance then? I am curious about that because that's a kind of a spiritual. That's love. That's a very deep spiritual concept. I don't know. It, it's, All I remember it's, is the motorcycle scene. Yeah, I mean, th- there is a romance throughout the movie from... Tom Cruise and the character Charlie played by Kelly McGillis. There is a romance there and, you know, it's them meeting, getting to know each other, them falling in love, having the famous take my breath away love scene, which that song won an Oscar. So yeah, you you see that, but when you watch part two, you find out that that didn't last much longer past the end of that movie. (laughs) So, uh, you know, I don't know if there's any, Thing too spiritual about it. I'm with know, you. Drew, I think it was a fling. I'm missing anything? <laughs> it's just a fling, and nothing is. They don't make one reference to her in the sequel at all. So apparently, like Doug said, nothing happened. They didn't get married. They didn't have children. It wasn't everlasting love by any means. The love story was there because you have to have a love story somewhere. You got to have a romantic interest at some point. So it was there. That's all it was. Yeah, I was going to ask, what is his draw to her? Because that. Could- Tell us a lot. She's hot. He was uh, he was apparently a womanizer. 
because the stunt that he pulled in the bar to pick her up, he had apparently had done that several times because Goose is like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently it works. And I, I don't think that Maverick is really interested in anything long term for the most part anyway. Hmm. Yeah, being yeah. a Navy guy, if he is that kind of guy that's gets moved around a lot. The love story there was just kind of there. Yeah. Hmm, yeah, I could pick out that maybe, I mean, human beings are attracted to beauty, so mm-hmm. that is something. But it, it wasn't a deeper no. connection then. No, <laughs> not much there. So I know this movie is a classic, so I think it's worthy to put on Doug's list. Drew, what do you think? Agree? Disagree? Should this movie I, be yeah. considered a great? Yeah. It's not in my top six, but it would definitely be my top ten. It's just a fun movie to watch. It's just a... I, That's the most important it thing. Time you see yeah. It. It's a fun movie. You know, we, we can break down a few things here and there, but if you really want to break this movie down, I mean, first of all, Tony Scott... Before he did Top Gun, all he did were music videos. Is that right? And you can kind of tell, yeah. (laughs) Top Gun was one of his first movies, one of his first big hits. It may not have been the first, not 100%, but I know he came from music videos. And you can kind of tell because there are a ton of montages because the soundtrack was so amazing. If If we ever do a top six soundtracks, Top Gun is definitely on that list. You know, my job on these podcasts is to dig deep and get the worthless stuff that you might not know. I have one about this movie. So Take My Breath Away, one of the most popular songs, that in Danger Zone, coming from Top Gun. Take My Breath Away was done by Berlin. Berlin's lead singer, Terry Nunn, auditioned for the role of Princess Leia in Star Wars and got close to the finals, and she got beat by Carrie Fisher. So then she became a lead singer for Berlin and ended up getting the uh, award for her song. So she was almost... She wouldn't have won an Oscar for Princess Leia. She won an Oscar. But yeah, she she was she auditioned for uh, Princess Leia. So correct me if I'm wrong, you might know this. This movie was responsible for inspiring like a crazy number of people to sign up for the Air Force, right? Like the biggest number of influx of new cadets in history. Is that correct? I, I wouldn't be surprised. Had ideas of going into the Navy after watching this movie. Uh, my grandfather was in the Navy. Oh, I was I was 100% in. Well, that's why my college roommate was in the Air Force, because of I actually talked to a recruiter and, and was going in, and I, I had to take some tests. I remember they came back and they said that I scored high enough to go into officer training. So I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to be like, oh, I'm going to be like a naval officer. Then they found out I had asthma and put an end to that dream real quick. <laughs> so that's why I was not uh. in the Navy. The only thing I wanted to do was join yeah, either the Air Force or I wanted to be a pilot. But I found out when it came to pilot, uh, especially like the Air Force Academy, you had to be like insanely smart. And I remember from my original hometown in uh, Westville. So I was still in junior high and the valedictorian of the class of, we'll say, 87. I'm not sure. But uh, he wanted to go into the Air Force Academy and he was denied. Wow. Didn't get past the wow. test or something like that. So I was like, I'm not going to be as smart as him. So <laughs> I guess I'll yeah. play in the NBA instead. Well, my college roommate Still was having trouble with colorblindness. Oh, yeah. And he made it through the first two years of screenings. And I remember watching him in the dorm room, like, go through practice eye exams. But then when he was a junior, they threw something at him that he hadn't seen before, and he failed. Now, he's only mildly colorblind, but they wouldn't allow him to fly after that. And it was devastating to him. I mean, it was so hard. Is that George? Because that was his life dream. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, his life dream was to fly an Air Force jet. So he still stayed in the Air Force, but he was an officer instead. But all because of this movie's inspiration. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, pretty cool. They did a good job with it. Like Drew said, it's a fun movie. For me... This film wouldn't make my top 10, but I do understand why it's on your list and recognize it as a great film and a classic. Yeah, and remember, this was, you know, I was in junior high when this movie came out, or maybe not even junior high. I may have been like fifth or sixth grade. So we were prime for that. Of course, at that point, and you'll see from one of my upcoming movies, 
you know, it was right in the middle of the Cold War. It was USA versus Russia. And this was a movie about fighting Russian MiGs and training to do that. And, you know, USA, USA. So that made it popular to begin with. Great action. They used actual jets from the Navy and Air Force and just Cinematography killed is amazing. it. You know, it was something, yeah, it was something completely different. Of course, she just had fun. And, you know, I don't care how bad the scene is. And you can find these clips on YouTube where it's like this song always makes it better. And he knew that going into this. And, you know, we've talked about the music a couple of times. We'll say it again. You know, the music really helped and made this movie because it was just pumps you up all the way from the. Top Gun Anthem to Danger Zone to Mighty Wings and they even break out a little Otis, is it Otis Redding uh, sitting by the dock of the bay. You know, it's just, yeah, great balls of fire. You've lost that love and feeling. So they hit the oldies and they bring in some of the modern rock music from the 80s. It was just the whole movie. You're into it. Yeah. Fun movie and, and just very nostalgic for me. And I'm sure Drew too. Yeah, very good. Well, listeners, you'll have to stay tuned to figure out what Doug's fifth favorite movie of all time is in the next video.